we often associate too much stress with depression but stress happens it's not a new phenomenon since time began humans have experienced stress in fact truth be told stress adds life some people thrive and some people fall apart why and why are more and more people falling apart well to answer this question we need to take a peek at the biology behind depression the problem with stress from a body chemistry perspective is it's an energy crisis but the body is equipped to handle stress in fact we don't just have one stress system we have two the first is the sympathetic nervous system sometimes referred to as the fight and flight response from the name you can tell it's designed to deal with stress in the moment the key player here is adrenaline the second system is the hpa axis this system is there to help you cope with stress that goes on for a longer period of time think hours not days the key player here is cortisol now contrary to what you might think cortisol is a good guy when you're facing a situation having a gunslinging cowboy on your side is a good thing in fact if it wasn't for cortisol you wouldn't have gotten out of bed this morning seriously getting up and going every morning is a mammoth undertaking for everyone not just the sleep deprived so to get you up and going a dollop of cortisol is drop kicked into play shortly before you open your eyes now the way cortisol gets you moving is he diverts sugar to your brain so cortisol is there to get you going but once you're going you should be okay unless something bad happens so cortisol levels peak around 9 a.m. in the morning and then they steadily decline well this is what happens on an average day if you've lived through a hurricane your cortisol will walk it up giving you the energy you need to survive basically what happens is your hypothalamus perceives trouble it tells the pituitary which tells the adrenal glands to dump cortisol into the circulation the cortisol then does its thing but there is an off switch so cortisol levels should never really be too high yes but for most people the level of stress they're experiencing is not hurricane level it's incremental so does the stress response in this situation work differently nope the off switch still works having said that in stressed out depressed people there is a cortisol issue they have too much cortisol and too little at the same time what's really happening is the rhythm is broken so what can be done about it well since a world without stress doesn't exist the best we can do is to lighten the load a little now to figure out how to do this we need to understand what stress is it's complicated most of the time we think of stress as the things that we can see you can think of them as being above ground and when it comes to stress management this is what is the focus rightly so but it's important to realize that there's an unseen side of stress metabolic stress i like to think of it as bad body chemistry and this is what tips people over the edge so what causes bad body chemistry in a word lifestyle we have people who eat too much and move too little and then we have people who move too much and eat too little both groups can find themselves depressed so now that we understand what stress is what can be done about it well our focus is to lift the load providing actual hands on support is hugely helpful emotional and social support can also make a big difference 
an antidepressant prescription can provide some relief. So sometimes this is an option worth exploring. But to really lighten the load, the body chemistry issue must be addressed. Now, most of the time when people talk lifestyle, they focus on diet and exercise. <laughs> I could do that, but I won't. The reason, if someone is depressed, they don't want to hear this. Deep down inside, they already know making changes in these departments would make a big difference. They would if they could, but they can't. They don't have the energy or bandwidth to do this. What if I told you you can improve body chemistry and it wouldn't actually be relatively easy? The secret to lightening the load is in the light. Remember, cortisol is supposed to keep a tight schedule. That is, levels are high early in the day and then drop off to rise again. So what determines cortisol's timing? Well, it turns out there's a special part of your brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN for short, which regulates your body's timing. Now, it's not the only clock you have. In fact, every organ in your body has a clock. But they all take their cue from the SCN, which is seen as the master clock. So how does the master clock tell time? Well, it correlates the amount of light falling on retinal ganglion cells with body function. The information is then passed on to all the body parts stuck in the dark so that they can sync their clocks. One of the ways it does this is through cortisol. So you can think of cortisol as the hands of the clock. But there is a back door. The SCN is also influenced by serotonin. It turns out that serotonin can shift the clock during the day and make the clock insensitive to light at night. Maybe some of you are thinking, finally, I thought depression was all about a serotonin shortage. You're right. Depressed people have a serotonin imbalance, which is why antidepressant medications, which are designed to increase serotonin, help. So, where does cortisol fit in? Well, it turns out serotonin is controlled by, you guessed it, cortisol. High levels of cortisol increase serotonin production. So serotonin levels are high in the day and low at night, assuming your circadian rhythm is normal. Of course, when you're stressed out, cortisol levels are not normal, so serotonin levels are not normal either, leading to a whole bunch of other problems because serotonin is a regulator of neurotransmission. This cheeky little guy is a master connector. On average, a serotonergic neuron connects to 500,000 other neurons. There are 17 different types of serotonin receptors, ultimately controlling a whole bunch of things. Depression, anyone? So, let's recap. Depression is characterized by serotonin imbalances. Stress, which can be psychological or metabolic, is characterized by cortisol imbalances. Cortisol impacts serotonin levels, and light impacts cortisol. And people living in the modern world have light problems, big time. Basically, when it comes to light exposure, we've got it completely back to front. We're exposed to low levels of light during the day and relatively high levels at night. So if you want to help the camel, you want to lighten the load. There are two sides to the problem. Let's start with the too little light in the day. Light bulbs are not sunshine. No matter how bright the lights are inside, they don't compare to the amount of light you experience outside, even on a cloudy day. 
The magic number you must be exposed to early in the morning is at least 500 lux. It doesn't sound like a lot, considering that even on a cloudy day, you get a thousand lux of brightness if you go outside. Most indoor environments only register 200 to 300 lux. Of course, corner offices are better than basements, but you really do need to go outside. And no, the hour commute to work in your air-conditioned car is not being outside. You have to open the window and stick your head out for the car to be considered outdoors. As a guide, aim for 30 minutes of outdoors every day. The earlier in the day, the better. Definitely before noon. Ideally, at around the same time every day. What about the light at night? Well, this is the kind of light which is ideal. Firelight has a red glow to it. This is very different from the light that we typically experience. The light coming from electronic devices has a blue tinge to it. And this is upsetting for melatonin, your night valet. He's afraid of the blue light. He hides in the pineal cupboard. This is why melatonin is only out and about at night. If it's not dark, he's not out. And getting a good night's sleep is going to be a serious challenge. Something that is very common in someone with depression. So what can you do to encourage melatonin to put in an appearance? Well, give your phone a bedtime. Avoid using electronic devices an hour or so before going to bed. Power them down. If this is not an option, wear eyewear designed to block out the blue light and make sure you're sleeping in the dark. Most of us don't. Studies suggest not sleeping in the dark increases your risk of breast cancer, obesity, insomnia, and depression. So how can you ensure you sleep in the dark? Well, block out the light. This can be done by closing doors, hanging thick line curtaining or blinds, and slapping on an eye mask. So you limit the light you're being exposed to in bed. And one last thing. Get an alarm clock. Time stamping in the middle of the night with your phone sends melatonin scurrying. And if you're afraid of the dark, or must get up to pee or breastfeed. Make sure that the light you're exposed to is or mimics candlelight. Lightening the load will go a long way to helping you cope with all the other stresses in your life, protecting you from depression through better body chemistry. For more tips and strategies that will help you to create better body chemistry, visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thanks for watching. Until next time, remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.